Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. Today I'm filming some cozy videos in my holiday PJs, finishing up a cup of tea, which I'm actually almost done with because I filmed another video that you'll also have probably seen now. But today I'm chatting about some of my most anticipated books for 2021. I'm doing a whole series of videos from different genres. If you haven't seen it yet, I have a list of the 21 romances that I'm most anticipating for next year. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 21 fantasy novels that I'm most anticipating for 2021. And let me tell you, this was by far the hardest category to narrow down, but hopefully we have a good list. Okay, so I'm very excited about this. I always love my end of year videos. And if you're new to the channel, I go really hard with end of year videos, which is why this year I'm starting earlier. Yay me. You will notice that the books that I'm going to talk about here are pretty heavily weighted towards the first half of the year and a lot of that just has to do with the things that we have announced so far. There are going to be more books coming out next year and there's more than even what I have here like I said like <laughs> narrowing this down to 21 was such a struggle. Clearly I love fantasy and want to read all the things even though I can't but I've narrowed it down to my top 21. This is a mix of young adult and adult titles. We are going to go by release date. One of these doesn't have a cover yet so I'm going to talk about it first but I think we have covers for all the rest of these and they're kind of scattered through mostly the first half of the year a little into the second half. With that said let's go ahead and dive in. These are my 21 most anticipated fantasy novels for 2021. So first up the one book we don't have a cover yet and we don't have a lot of information and it's possible that this release date could change but currently they are projecting that we're going to get the second Crescent City book on November 2nd. We don't have a title for this yet. This is by Sarah J Mass. So House of Earth and Blood was the first book in that series which I read and really enjoyed. I'll definitely be picking up the second book whenever we get it. Supposedly it's going to be November 2nd so we'll see what happens with that. Moving on let's talk about all of the things we have more firm information on. First up in January I've got two releases that I'm very excited for and they're both coming out January 12th. Across the Grass Green Fields by Shauna McGuire is the latest installment in the Wayward Children series. This series is an auto buy series for me. I love all of the books that she has out and so I'm just gonna obviously read them. I do have an e-arc of this one so I'm hoping to get to it fairly soon and then I'll be definitely purchasing a hardcover. I hear this one is really good based on early reviews and uh, this one takes place in the grasslands that is for you know those girls who were really into horses when they were children. I was not one of them but I had friends who were so apparently this will especially appeal to those of you who were horse girls. Then the other book that day is Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. I'm really looking forward to these. It's a collection of the short stories that she wrote for her Hazelwood books. So I loved the first book. Didn't love the second one so much but by far the best part of the second book was the short stories that we got interspersed with it. So an entire collection of them I am very much looking forward to and the cover looks beautiful. I'm sure these are going to be great. Moving on let's talk about February. I've got three books to talk about there. February 9th we're getting The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. Finally this was pushed back an entire year because of COVID. She's a debut author and this is an African inspired YA fantasy that I hear does get fairly violent. Namina Forna was a refugee from war and she took a lot of that experience and infused it into this book. So I'm for sure looking forward to it. I hear amazing things. Definitely will be reading that one. Then also on February 9th is the one book on this list that I have a physical arc of. So let me show you. This is The Girl from Shadow Springs by Ellie Cipher. It's a debut YA story that sounds really interesting and the author actually reached out to me about reviewing it and I was like yes please send it to me. It sounds great. And so I'm going to put it on this list too. It says the Revenant meets true grit with a magical twist in this thrilling and atmospheric debut fantasy about two teens who must brave a frozen wasteland and the foes within it to save their loved ones and uncover a deadly secret. I mean the description sounds fantastic. I kind of love the cover. Definitely looking forward to reading this one. Then on February 23rd is a book that looks pretty amazing and I hear some good things about it. 
A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I think this one might also be a debut. It's being pitched as The Cruel Prince meets City of Bones in this thrilling urban fantasy set in the magical underworld of Toronto that follows a queer cast of characters racing to stop a serial killer whose crimes could expose the hidden world of fairies to humans. I mean, like, everything about that description sounds so great. <laughs> and uh, early reviews look pretty good. So that's definitely one that's on my radar. Moving on to March, I have three releases to talk about in March as well. Two of them are coming out on March 2nd. First up, of course, this is going to be on the list. You know, it I'm a fan. And that is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in her Last Hour series. I really love Chain of Gold. It was one of my favorite books of the year. I, for me at least, my favorite of the books that she's written. And I'm definitely looking forward to continuing on with the series. So that's on my list. And then the other one is a debut adult historical fantasy that looks super interesting and the cover is stunning. This is another one I think I have an e-arc of on NetGalley. It's The Conductors by Nicole Glover. It says The Conductors features the magic and mystery of Jim Butcher's Dresden Files written with the sensibility and historical setting of Octavia Butler's Kindred. Introducing Hetty Rhodes, a magic user and former conductor on the Underground Railroad who now solves crimes in post-civil war Philadelphia. I mean, guys, this sounds amazing and it's the start of a new series is what it looks like. So I'm here for it. Really excited to see how this goes. And then my final March release is March 16th. This is Queen of Gilded Horns by Amanda Joy. It's the sequel to A River of Royal Blood, which I really, really loved. This was one of my favorite books in 2019. It was her debut YA fantasy with some like dark elements and a really cool world. It also has vampires as one of the people groups in the series. So definitely looking forward to this. I think it's a duology. I'm not sure. Let me see. Yeah, it looks like it's a duology. So definitely interested to see how that series wraps up. I'll probably need to do a reread of book one because it's been a while to like refresh my memory. But it's about two sisters who have to fight to the death to decide who's going to be queen. And uh, I really liked it. Also, these ones got new covers and they're pretty beautiful. All right, so moving on to April. I've got four books to talk about in April. This, see, guys, I mean, there's so many other things coming out too, I know, but I had to, <laughs> I had to make some decisions, okay? <laughs> okay, first up, another one I have an e-arc for already that I think sounds very intriguing. This is Malice by Heather Walter, and this one is for an adult audience. It says, here's the description, or at least part of it. I'll just read you a little bit. A princess isn't supposed to fall for an evil sorceress. But in this darkly magical retelling of Sleeping Beauty, true love is more than a simple fairy tale. Okay, so guys, like, first of all, we're getting a sapphic retelling of Sleeping Beauty where the princess falls for the evil sorceress. Like, seriously, this sounds amazing. I, I, I love a good villain story and like everything about that sounds great. So definitely going to be reading that one. April 6th, we're getting House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I was actually part of the cover reveal for this. I'll put a picture of the Instagram. It was to match the cover, guys. I know it's like a weird, some people were like, what is this? And then they were like, oh, okay, I get it. It was fun. It was like fun to try to recreate it. This is a YA story that's kind of a fantasy horror blend, it sounds like. 17-year-old Iris Hollow has always been strange. Something happened to her and her two older sisters when they were children, something they can't quite remember, but that left each of them with an identical half-moon scar at the base of their throats. And then their sister goes missing. It's, it's one of those ones that's like kind of a thriller horror, but fantasy as well, so I grouped it in here. <laughs> Then Rena Rossner is putting out a new book. This is The Light of the Midnight Stars. The cover on this looks really stunning and she wrote The Sisters of the Winter Wood a couple years ago and I really enjoyed that. This is not a sequel but it feels like it's got a pretty similar vibe to it. It says it's an evocative combination of fantasy, history, and Jewish folklore. A fairy tale inspired novel set deep in the Hungarian woods where the magic of King Solomon lives on in his descendants. 
and yeah anyway so this sounds really interesting I like I said I loved her debut and I'm very interested in reading this one then the last book for April is coming out April 20th this one is called these feathered flames by Alexandra Overy it says it's three dark crowns meets wicked saints in a queer own voices retelling of the firebird a Russian folktale sounds really interesting three dark crowns meets wicked saints sounds pretty good to me i didn't love wicked saints but i loved the concept behind it and i really loved three dark crowns so I, I'm, I'm interested in this one we'll see we'll see how it is it's one of those ones where i'm like are they over pitching it and over hyping it or is it actually going to live up to what it says it is we shall see. Then in May I have two books to talk about. First up on May 11th there's a debut coming out from Orbit that looks amazing and this cover guys is just absolutely stunning. This is Son of the Storm by Sui Davies Okungbawa and it looks really interesting. A young scholar's ambition threatens to reshape an empire determined to retain its might in this epic tale of violent conquest buried histories and forbidden magic. So there's a scholar, there's political obligations. This is exactly the sort of epic fantasy I enjoy and it is the first in a series. So definitely interested in checking that one out. And then on May 18th, we're getting In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. Again, last year they wrote a book that I love, Beyond the Black Door. And so pretty much whatever they're putting out, I'm probably gonna read because I was such a huge fan. This description also sounds very intriguing and dark. It says, a pansexual blood mage reluctantly teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion among the living and the dead. In Thanopolis, those gifted with magic are assigned undead spirits to guard them and control them. Ever since Rovin's father died trying to keep her from this fate, she's hidden her magic. But when she accidentally reveals her powers, she's bound to a spirit and thrust into a world of palace intrigue and deception. Um, so it sounds great. I'm, I'm probably gonna buy this one for sure. Yeah. All right, moving on to June. Uh, <laughs> um, there are one, two, three, four, four books in June four books in June. There's there's a lot guys. There's so many fantasy books coming out last because I'm skipping stuff too that looks great but I narrowed it down. I was only doing 21. <laughs> I tried really hard. <laughs> First up on June 8th we have two books coming out. When Night Breaks by Janela Angelis is the sequel to Where Dreams Descend. This is the second book in the duology so it's going to finish up that story. I am very excited for it. This is her YA fantasy that's super atmospheric and it draws on both Moulin Rouge and The Phantom of the Opera. Book one was one of my favorite books of this year so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And then on the same day we're also getting The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. I have loved what I've read from Tasha Suri in the past and this is the first book in a new series that she's writing. I am here for it. I think her writing is incredible so definitely gonna be checking that one out. Then on June 15th we have an author tuber with a traditionally published debut that looks amazing. This is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury and the cover is really cool. I been, I met her when I went to Book That Fest last year. She was lovely. I've been following her and the book sounds great. It says a rich dark urban fantasy debut following a teen witch who is given a horrifying task, sacrificing her first love to save her family's magic. The problem is she's never been in love. She'll have to find the perfect guy before she can kill him. <laughs> I mean like this sounds so great. Definitely looking forward to this one. Very interested in reading it. And for those of you who've been looking for books about black witches, here's one for you. Then the final book in June is coming out June 22nd. This is Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard, book four in the Witchland series. I am a huge Witchlands fan. I don't think you can see them, but I've got like a whole collection of multiple copies, like multiple versions of the Witchlands books. And this one looks great. I follow her on social media. I love her as an author and influencer, but I also really, really love the series. And it's the kind of series that you will get more out of it if you read it closely. And the kind Kind of series that's very rereadable because when I've reread them I would pick up on clues and hints and things that wouldn't have made sense earlier so I just love the series and another auto buy <laughs> like another one that for sure I'm going to be buying and reading. Okay 
three more books to talk about. I've got two in August and then one in September. First up on August 10th, we're getting The Sisters of Reckoning by Charlotte Nicole Davis. This is the second book in The Good Luck Girls, which I loved The Good Luck Girls. It looks like we're getting a new cover design, which I like. I really liked the initial cover, but this one is fine too. It's a fantasy western with a girl gang, and I, I think the first book would make a great Netflix adaptation if somebody wanted to pick it up. But um, yeah, definitely interested in reading this. I think it's just a duology, but I'm not sure. Then on August 17th, we're getting Casadora by Romina Garber. This is the sequel to another favorite of mine, which is, is hiding behind these wrapped books. Lobizona. Yeah, it's back there. Anyway, it's a sequel to Lobizona, and I loved the first book. I'm really excited to see where the second book goes. If you like portal fantasy with a lot of big thematic elements that's dealing with issues of undocumented immigrants and misogyny, it has witches and werewolves, and it's just, it's great. I really love the first one, so I'll probably do a reread of that before the second book comes out. And then on September 21st, we have the final book that is on this list. That is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. When I first saw the cover, I was like, oh my gosh, is it a sequel to House in the Cerulean Sea? I don't think it is. I think it's something completely different, but I'm, I'm still going to read it because I loved House in the Cerulean Sea all a lot. This one, what is this one about? Let me see. It says this one is a contemporary fantasy about a ghost who refuses to cross over and the ferryman he falls in love with. Oh, I love this so much. So it sounds like this is going to be another really sweet queer love story with fantasy elements, with older men. Cute. Yeah. So definitely going to be reading that one as well. So there you go. It was hard, but I did it. Those are my 21 most anticipated fantasy novels coming out next year. Are there going to be more? Yes, of course there are. And this is clearly heavily towards the earlier part of the year. But talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of the books that I talked about today. And for your question of the day, let me know what is one of your most anticipated fantasy books for the coming year. Is it something on this list? Is there something that I didn't talk about? I, I mean, look, I know there are things I missed. I know there, like, there were things I had to make choices. <laughs> this was by far the most difficult list to pare down, but did my best. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to support the work of the channel, check out the Patreon in the video description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.